Hey, on this video, we are working with writing equations. I'm gonna approach this a little bit different than what I've done in the past, uh, only because this requires a little bit more, um, what would you call it, participation from you. And so I'm gonna go through some of these. I'm gonna give you some, but I would encourage you to write down more than what I write down. So let's go through this. Writing an equation can be difficult. This is the one area where a lot of students say they struggle with. And so I wanna make this easy on you, as, as easy as I can. So we're gonna read each situation over here on the left, and then we're going to come up with um, what's happening mathematically. We're not solving anything. We wanna, we wanna kinda say, hey, this is what's going on. Okay, so Wendy and Kingston are constructing a sandbox. They cut a piece of wood into four equal parts. So what's happening? Well, uh, we could say something like cutting, come on, pen. My pen not going to work again for me. Every video, goodness. Okay. Let's see. So cutting apart refers to what operation? Dividing. Yeah, hopefully that's what you're saying. Let's look at the next one. Mrs. Thomas has money in her bank account. She goes to the store and spends $50. So What's happening? Well, spending money, man, I can write, I promise. This pen's messing me up. Spending money refers to subtracting or subtraction. We'll just call it subtraction. Spending money refers to subtraction. I'm sorry about my spelling there. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at uh, maybe using some keywords to identify some things. So what I mean by that is uh, if you see the word add, or if you know that you need to add in the problem, what kind of words might you see in a word problem that would indicate we need to add? Well, you could see something, I mean, sometimes it's as straightforward as the word sum, right? What is the sum of these two numbers? And you know to add. Um, sometimes you'll see maybe words like more than. If you see more than, you know that you're adding. Um, if you see increased by, you know you're adding. And I'll give you one more. If you see combined, that means we're adding. There are more words than that, but there's four examples of some phrase, words or phrases that you might see in a word problem that mean to add. Now let's talk about subtract. Well, if we have some as one of them, then wouldn't difference be the other, right? So what's the difference? Sometimes students think, oh, well, I'm just looking for the difference between two things. It's not like comparing two pictures. When we're talking about math, we're talking about subtraction. So difference means to subtract. If we had more than for add, then what do you think the opposite of that is? Less than. So that's the nice thing about doing word association is, um, we're doing opposites here, right? Sum and difference are opposites, more than, less than are opposites. So if one is increasing by, the other one is decreased by. If one is combined, uh, the other you could say a loss, right? So what about multiply? Well, multiply, the most common one we hear is the word times, right? What's this times this? What's that times that, right? Um, sometimes you'll even hear, you'll, you'll read the word each. Kind of have to look for that one. But if it says uh, what is each of their values, sometimes that's multiplying. Uh, we could say per. And uh, the most common one is product. What is the product? All right, and of course with divide, it's gonna be the opposite for the most part, but the, the words won't necessarily look like the opposite, but we could say half would mean divide, right? If you're cutting something in half, um, if you're splitting something, that means we're dividing. Um, if you, let's, let's use the term quotient, right? That is our term for the answer to a division problem. Um, what about the term shared equally, right? That would mean that we are going to be dividing. And then equals. So the most common term you're going to see when the word is equals is the word is. Uh, sometimes you'll even see the word same. Those are the two key words that we use for equals. I can't think of any beyond that, but I gave you four for each of those, all except for equals. So hopefully that will help you get on your way a little bit. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, so here 
uh, we want to read the situation and complete the graphic organizer. Okay, so Miles and Ella have an equal number of stickers. They find blank more stickers, which brings the total number of stickers to blank. How many stickers do Miles and Ella have? Okay, so this one is basically the idea that we're going to be adding. My pen disappeared again. I need to go back. Okay, so basically we are adding Miles and Ella stickers with the found stickers to equal the total stickers. So you could say they find Miles and Ella stickers, which goes up at the top here, and which brings the total number of stickers to blank. How many stickers do they have? So Miles and Ella stickers plus the found stickers equal the total stickers. So that would be a mathematical equation that we could write to find our solution there. What about this one? Jose deposits blank dollars into his lunch account. He spends blank dollars for each lunch. He now has a balance of blank dollars in his account. How many lunches has Jose purchased? So we could write something like, well, he's got a lunch deposit. He's putting money in. Um, and then there's the cost of the lunches. Now, if there's a cost of the lunches, there's a lunch deposit, he deposits into his account, but he spends this, are we going to be adding these two or subtracting? And hopefully you're saying subtracting, right? If he spends the dollars that he put in, that means he's taking away. And so that equals his balance of dollars in his account, which we're just going to write as his lunch balance. So hopefully that's fairly simple. Shouldn't take too much effort to write that down, but that's an idea of how we would read the situation and write out a problem. Now notice we do have blanks in each one, but we didn't address those because we don't know the answer to those. All right, let's talk about some situations. We're gonna write out the equation and then we're going to solve for the equation. Now, I wanna prepare you because on your unit test, you are gonna have questions that are very much like this. So it's not just a matter of solving, it's a matter of knowing how to write the equation. And some of you may say, well, I can solve without the equation. That's great. However, we need to get in the habit of writing the equation because we won't always be able to solve without the equation. So a freight company charges $1.45 per pound plus a handling fee of $3.25. A customer is charged $9.05 to ship a package. How many pounds did the package weigh? First off, we talked about some terms that we use for multiplying, right? If you look back at the top of your page or on the other side of the page, we saw the word per, right? This one stood out to me right away. What does that mean? 145 per pound means 145 is being multiplied by a number. Now, what number is that? Well, we don't know. So since we're talking about uh, pounds for the package, let's go ahead and put 1.45 and we're going to write the letter P. Come on, pen, work. There we go. 145P plus, what does that mean? That means we're adding, right? That's easy one, plus a handling fee of 325. Now that does mean that that is a, what we call a constant. So plus 325. Um, a customer is charged. So notice I'm underlining all of these main terms because they're telling us what to do. Is charge means equals 9.05. So what that means now is we just need to solve. Okay. Two-step equation should be pretty simple. Subtract 325 because I want the variable by itself. What do I get when I subtract those two? Remember to bring down the 1.45p equals what's three or let's see nine dollars and five cents minus 3.25 is going to give us five dollars and 80 cents total and then we need to divide by 1.45 because we want to know how many pounds i'm going to write it over here since i don't quite have enough room so we should have four pounds total or LB, okay, four pounds total. We could put LBS, there we go. Four pounds total, okay. For these next two, I'm simply going to help you set them up. I'm gonna let you solve these on your own because I believe you can. 
All right, a tenant is, I'm gonna start underlining words that I know we're gonna associate with, with what we're do, how we're solving, right? How we're writing this out. A tenant is charged $850 for rent on the fifth of the month. For every day they are early, they can deduct $15 from their rent. The tenant pays $805. How many days early did they pay rent? Okay, wow, this is gonna be tough, isn't it? They're charged $850 for rent. For every day they are early, they can deduct. Okay, so I know deduct is gonna be subtract. So we're gonna be subtracting $15 from their rent, okay. Now, is this, okay, so it does say for every day, for every day. So that means it's not just minus $15, it's $15 per day. It doesn't say the word per, but we know for every day. So that means we're going to be multiplying this by, um, let's call it R for rent, right? $15 per day for rent. So minus 15R, where would we get the other numbers from? Well, let's see. So if they're charged $850 for rent, Okay, so that means 850 minus 15R, right? Because they're saving $15 per day is going to equal, and this says the tenant pays 805. Okay, 805. I know you might be saying, well, we did underline the word is at the beginning. Why didn't we put 850 on one side of the equation? Um, we didn't in this term, in this time, because it does say, if you read through the context clues, right, they're charged $850 for rent. For every day they're early, they deduct $15. So we're taking $15 from this number. So this is what we call the constant. Now, what, what we're solving for is, okay, if the tenant only paid $805, then that is going to be what it equals. So I know sometimes it shows is at the beginning, and that's confusing. This one did, and it kind of threw us off. So um, that's why I took time to read through this because I want to make sense of this as well. Let's look at number five. Jordan pays 12, and I'm sorry, number four, you need to solve, right? That's the equation. Uh, number five, Jordan pays $12.50 for a ride sharing membership, lowering his fees to $1.50 per ride. Okay, there's that word per. In March, Jordan spent $39.50 to use the ride sharing membership. How many rides did he take? Well, if he spent 39.5, I know that's going to be what equals. So let's talk about this. So he pays, if he's paying, what does that mean? $12.50, lowering his fees to $1.50 per ride. Okay. So in this case, here's, here's what we're looking at. Typically when we say that someone's paying something, we're subtracting that, right? But in this case, we're not because it says he spent $39.50 technically that's a negative. So since he spent the 39.50, I'm not going to write as a negative. I'm going to leave that as a positive because I'm going to be adding, we have the $12.50. That's our constant. That's not changing, but the change is the fee, right? And I'm going to be adding that 150 and we're going to put, uh, let's make this an F for a fee, right? 1.5 times F. So that's going to be our equation here. And again, we're adding them because we're talking about the total fees that he's going to be, that he's going to accrue, okay? Or accrue, sorry, I said the word wrong. The fees he's going to accrue. So that means when we add all this together, we get $39.50 as our result. Okay, let's move on. I think we've got a few more to look at. And then we'll be done. Um, number six. Jung purchased several video games priced at $29.95 each and paid $5.95 for express shipping. Okay, notice this word each. What does that mean? That means we are multiplying. So 29.95 each. So we're talking games, let's put a G. And paid $5 for express shipping. That means we're adding the $5.95. This goes back to, hey, if you're on Amazon, right, you're purchasing something. I'm purchasing several video games. If all the video games cost the same amount, plus there's a shipping cost, that's going to add to your total. But the question here is not, um, not how much he's spending, but how much his, his each game was, right? So we're going to make this equals because it says his total purchase. That means the end result is 185 
0.65. And again, I'm going to let you solve. Okay. Last one. Well, last one of these. Then we have number eight. Milo's five inches shorter than his brother, Jace. If Milo's 42 inches tall, how tall is Jace? Okay. Milo is 42 inches tall. Jace is five inches shorter. So if Jace is five inches shorter, we're going to take away five from Jace. So let's, let's do J for Jace. So J minus five equals 42. This one's a little bit simpler than that, right? A one-step equation here. So not as hard as you might have thought. So I think you can figure that out, right? Hopefully. Okay, last one. Right, a real world situation that could be represented by the equation. This one I want you to do on your own. So I want you to write a real world situation that could be represented by this. It could be shopping, it could be video games, it could be, um, I don't know, followers on social media, whatever you wanna use, and then tell me what the variable represents. Should be fairly simple. Um, I think you guys can do this. That does it for this video, see you next time.